नमस्ते टू वन एंड ऑल माई नेम इज जानवी आई हैव चूसन द टॉपिक फ्रेंडशिप एंड टीम वर्क विच आई हैव लाइक द मोस्ट फ्रॉम द गिव एंड टॉपिक्स सो फर्स्ट आई टेल यू द सिमिलैरिटी बिटवीन फ्रेंडशिप एंड टीम वर्क टीम वर्क रिक्वायर्स कम्युनिकेशन एंड सो दस फ्रेंडशिप टू सॉल्व मोस्ट प्रॉब्लम्स वी नीड टू वर्क वेल एंड कम्युनिकेट विद अदर पीपल वेन दे टीम अप विद अनदर पर्सन और अ फ्रेंड इन 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 एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ अ क्रिएटिव प्ले सिचुएशन दे इज अ गुड चांस दैट दे एस्टाब्लिश अ गुड सोशल कनेक्शन टीम वर्क ऑल्सो लीड्स टू लर्निंग individuals have their own set of strength and skills but when the whole team works as a unit everyone has an opportunity to learn from each other's mistakes when we are having good friends in a team they always keep us motivated are honest kind respectful loyal and etc alone we can do very little but together we can do so much always this is why my friends in a team with good friends learning becomes more fun even though you win or lose you will enjoy the time being together if you want to be successful in your life please value please value the power of friendship and teamwork thank you and have a wonderful saturday namaste to one and all present here i am priti reddy from class 9th year today i am here to give you guys a presentation about the topic digital literacy what is digital literacy digital literacy is the ability and the skill to find evaluate digitalize and create content using informative technology as well as the internet students must have some specific skills about digital literacy while reading and interacting with online content that may contain many embedded resources such as hyperlinks audio clips charts or graphs that even help students to make their choices why digital literacy is important for kids Nowadays students are also asked to go one step forward to create and share their ideas and thoughts and to be so responsible. Is digital literacy more than reading online? Yes, of course. Digital literacy is much more than reading online. Let's take an example. Reading a book through online and reading a book through print out. In most cases there is no much difference. It's just taking some words and replacing them on a web page in a screen with text. This is a picture of essential digital literacy. In this, we use both cognitive and technical skills. Essential digital literacy, as we can imagine, is going so much further. However, students who use both cognitive as well as technical skills are on their way to become digitally literate consumers. This is a picture of worldwide digital literacy. Final tips and takeaways. The benefits of digital literacy are develops accountability, personalized learning, breadth of information, breadth of information, watching videos and etc. Some examples of digital literacy are software, computer, online courses, online classes and etc. Conclusion: Digital literacy is very important in everyone's life. It has many benefits which improves everyone's daily life. Thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity. Have you ever wondered how your life would be without any technology? It's a nightmare. I know that. Namaste to one and all present here. My name is Ritika. I'm studying in ninth standard. I'm here to give a presentation on digital literacy. I'm going to speak about its advantages, bright side, and the dark side, side effects, and how can it uh, help our like life, realistic examples, and etc. First, what is digital literacy? Digital literacy is an online study, and In 1997, Paul Gilster, a historian and an educator, first coined the term digital literacy. He said it is about mastering ideas, not just keystrokes. By the term keystrokes, I refer to computing. Now, coming to the real life examples, have you ever heard the name Baidu Samvedant? Yeah, they were playing a very big role in COVID times because they were the only source of education we could ever face that time, and they were life saviors. advantages of digital literacy uh, they were helping people to know how to improve their social media contacts digital media accessing and understanding the content online and it was most beneficial for introverts they don't need to talk to other people in person to get the information they can just uh, access any website google and anything else for the information they want side effects side effects is a bad part but it is also important and these days online harassment like cyber bullying identity theft are becoming more and the websites you access you have to be more careful because they can also be scams 
Yes. I want to conclude this by saying that digital literacy is a very good thing created by humankind. If you use it for your own beneficial growth, it can change your life in a drastic way and can make your life much, much easier. Thank you. Namaste to everyone. I am Isha of grade 10 and now I will be narrating a story called The Sermon at Banaras by Betty Remsha which describes an immortal value about a mortal human. Here, sermon means a moral talk and Banaras is a holy place near River Ganga. This story highlights the early life of Gautama Buddha who left his princely needs and went to achieve enlightenment which he actually did after wanting for 7 years. Gautama Buddha was a prince in northern India. At the beginning of his life, his name was Siddhartha. He loved hunting and once on fine day while hunting, he came across few sites which asked him to gain enlightenment so that he can witness the sorrow he saw. Okay, so the part of the story starts when he meets, when he meets Kisa Gautami who lost her son due to which she lost her son, self and she started begging for people to make her son alive and people thought she lost her senses which she actually did. Eventually she come across a man who tells her that Sakyamuni may help you and with a lot of courage she goes to Sakyamuni and on listening her thing Sakyamuni tells her to get a handful of mustard seeds from a house where no one is dead. After trying a lot, she couldn't find any house uh, to suit the uh, condition which Sakyamuni gave. She finally sits near a street and deep thinkly that she deep thinkly that this incident has made her so hopeless and she is, she has been searching for something which is not possible for her to achieve. And on which Buddha tells her that life and death are cycles of universe which no one can escape. Namaste to one and all present here. My name is Abhilash P and I'm studying in 10th grade. Today I am going to be summing up the main points and also narrating this poem named Amanda which is written by Robin Klee. So the main points of Amanda are that she is a school going child, just like us. So she has a routine of going to school, finishing her homework and then coming back, which is a daily going routine. But the one thing which really annoys her the most is her mother's instructions towards her. Such as, do not bite your nails and put them in your mouth. Do not slouch your shoulders like this. And do not hunch your shoulders like this. Which really annoys her a lot. And she decides to start dreaming in the day. So, which is called as daydreaming. So at first she thinks of herself as a mermaid, which goes against her mother. And she feels really annoyed towards her daughter. Because she wants to bring her up in a correct way. After this dreaming, she again, her mother comes into her room again and asks her if she has done many things, such as tidying her room, cleaning her shoes, and also doing her homework, which again annoys her, and then she goes back into another dream, being an orphan on the street walking like that, because she wants to be free and not under the peer pressure of her parents. So afterwards, her mother again instructs her, or orders her in this sense, to not eat chocolate, as it will bring up Aiken. Acne is a type of flammable disease which shows up around here or here or even here when you eat too many sugary snacks. It starts to form up cavities, your teeth starts to decay and it feels really flammable. So it starts to pain here and it brings a tremendous change in your body. So for that, Amanda again feels really annoyed and thinks of herself as Rapunzel. Rapunzel is a character in the Disney universe which is, who has been uh, introduced to us by Walt Disney. And she still feels really annoyed at her mother and her parents who have continuously told her not to do things like these. And she also is also informed not to be moody and stop sulking. Sulking is a form of crying or weeping. And if anyone looks at her, they will just go to her mother and think that they have nagged her. Nagging is a form of scolding where nobody is stopping or anything and they continuously go on for a while. So the main moral of this poem is that so parents can bring up children in the right way, but then if they are brought up too harshly, or if they're not exactly overprotected or literally little to no protection, but in the in the middle. So if they are continuously brought up under harsh conditions, then that is going to stifle up their mind. Stifling meaning it is going to continuously limit their brain until they don't have any little to no freedom at all.